okay, with the intention of gaining nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, who has to fast, okay? Every adult, male or female, who is physically and mentally healthy, okay, and is not a traveler. So, basically, every healthy male, female, and who is to decide physically well and mentally uh, well? Well, as long as a, uh, a person is able to function, well, of course, we, we usually go by the definition of the doctor. If the, if the local doctor says he's fine, then that, mean, that means he's fine. Fasting is not fard on, basically, nabalig, those that are not mature. Children, anyone under 15, it is not fard upon them. But of course, we start to enjoin on them to fast by the time, you know, starting from when they're 7, 8, and by the time they're 10, they should become habitual in fasting and praying and all of the other things so that by the time they reach maturity, it's easy for them. It's second nature for them. Right? That's, that's what it is. Um, fasting is not fard on those who are mentally unstable. Fasting is not fard on those who have debilitating illness okay, that prevents from fasting. So this is what it is. Next here. Intention. Do you really have to make the intention? Do you have to say it? If you do, when do you make the intention? Intention has to be made before each fast for it to count. Do you have to literally say it? Not exactly, but basically if you're getting up for the suhoor, that in itself is the intention. Right? You're getting up, that's the intention you have. Um, a lot of people do this where they go to sleep and they make the intention that's okay, meaning the night before without getting up for suhoor, although it's okay, but again, like we mentioned in the khutbah, that it's, you, it's void of blessings. You miss out the blessings of the time of suhoor. You really should try to get up for the suhoor, but as long as you made the intention, okay, the night before, then the fast will be valid. Okay, if a person stays away from all those things that break one's fast without an intention, the fast will not be valid. In other words, you stay hungry, you stay thirsty, and you stay away from, you know, the marital relations, but you have no intention to fast, the fast is not going to count in that case, okay? When do you make the intention? The night before. It starts from Maghrib, as we know, in Islam, this is why the taraweeh is prayed first because the, the month of Ramadan starts right after Maghrib. The first of Ramadan, inshallah, once the moon is sighted, which is most likely going to be Sunday, right after Maghrib, then the month of Ramadan starts with the night. So the first of Ramadan starts with the night first and then the next day is the first day of Ramadan. Then after the first day after Maghrib, it's going to be considered the night of the second and then the next day will be the day of the second. So the night precedes the day in Islam. That's how it goes. What does it say here? The night before and last till Dawatul Kubra, which basically means if you break up the fasting time in three, it's the middle point there um, that up to that point, your intention will count. After that, it becomes very late. And then according to other madahib, the intention is not, excuse me, it is not uh, part of the wajib of the fast, okay? I'm going to skip ahead here. They tell you a little bit, explain it. If Fajr starts at 4, Maghrib is at 9, so midday would be considered 12, okay? Alhamdulillah, we don't have to fast this long. We have a very short fast, alhamdulillah. Are they? How about now? Still? I don't know what, uh, Brother Munawar, is, uh, is there any way we can show the full page? Or is it because the way we got, <laughs> that's how it is? Okay. I think this is just the way it is, uh, the way the file was sent. Oh, we can go like this? Okay, that's fine. Okay. All right, Ahmed woke up to partake in suhoor. However, he forgot to make intention. Will his fast be valid? What do you guys think? Why would his fast be valid? Because he got up for suhoor. So the whole intention is there. All right. Similarly, performing the taraweeh salah will also serve as an intention. All right. Mustahab. What is mustahab? Mustahab comes 
the word hub is in there, which means that which is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that which is encouraged, that which we should try to do. What are some of the mustahab recommended actions? Uh, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, reported by Sayyidina Abu Darda, three things. Number one, to hasten to open the fast. Number two, to delay the suhoor. And number three, to place the right hand over the left hand in prayers. Okay? So, what does it mean to hasten to open the fast? Means as soon as Maghrib comes in, you hasten. We always tell the Mu'addin or we always recommend that they wait uh, instead of the exact second, maybe they can wait like 30 seconds give the adhan, you know, even if you delay by one minute, it's still to be on the safe side, okay? Just to be on the safe side. But that means within the minute, you break the fast. It's mustahab. And to delay the suhoor means to do the suhoor all the way till the end of the suhoor time. And the hadith comes in Bukhari that the Prophet ﷺ was asked, how much time was there before? Uh, between the time that the Prophet ﷺ stopped eating and before he prayed his Fajr Salah. So he said that it was mentioned that enough time, enough to recite 50 verses. 50 verses of the Quran. So 50 ayat for some people it could take 10 minutes, for some people maybe 12, maybe 15 minutes. So this is the time that the, he left between the suhoor and the fajr. So to, pr to eat suhoor all the way till the adhan is not correct. It is actually against the sunnah. And this is why if you see our calendar, we wrote an imsak time this year so that the people can stop a couple of minutes before to be on the safe side. This is still considered delaying the suhoor all the way to the pre-dawn, okay? But you want to be on the safe side. You don't want to, you know, eat while you're in the gray area or right, right before the adhan happens. Okay, this is not correct. The best time to have suhoor, and we just mentioned this hadith right here, equivalent to the recitation of 50 verses. This is hadith of Bukhari. All right, what's the best item to break the fast with? And that is fresh dates. And if the Prophet ﷺ did not have fresh dates, then he would break the fast with dried dates. And if he did not have that either, then sips of water. And of course, we try to have something that is good for you, something with protein. Many people have yogurt and light suhoor, and that's great. Okay? That's one of the best things you can have for your, for your belly and to give you some energy. Having some dates, maybe some yogurt, maybe something light, dairy if you want, or whatever you have. You know, you try to keep it light, but do have, hydrate yourself as well. All right, what's next here? What are the makruhat? What are those things that are undesirable? Those things that are disliked or detestable to chew gum, rubber, plastic items or other things while you're fasting. Okay. Collecting one's saliva and then swallowing, trying to quench your thirst. All right, to delay a bath after has become obligatory intentionally until fajr that's makru to use toothpaste or tooth powder to clean one's teeth it is permissible to use miswak of any permissible fresh branch or root basically they're trying to tell you brush your teeth before you start your fast because during the fast it's possible you can swallow that or you can taste it and that's not good okay so Brush your teeth right before you uh, make your intention for your fast. And in the daytime, use the miswak. That's going to help you with your breath. And that will keep your mouth fresh as well. Okay? So far, everybody, anybody have any questions? Anybody have? Yes, brother. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yes, inhaler, anything that goes through the nose into the stomach or to the brain will invalidate the fasting. Now, if a person has to take it, if he must take it, in other words, he needs it, the person is going through or has having an asthma attack, then he must take it, but he has to make up that fast. He has to make up that fast. Yeah, he just makes that one day up, yeah. 
And if it's a problem where they need it all the time, then that could be a different ruling applied to that person. Then it, 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 would, it would be different. Um, Wallahu alam, in that case, uh, we would need to see. If the person can schedule it, where if they're able to take it at the time of suhoor and iftar and that's enough, then, then that should be the situation. Otherwise, um, yeah, if, if the, the, I mean, usually it's controlled to a certain amount. If the person's body, if the, if the body is empty, the, the stomach is empty, it helps a lot. But if there's a dire case in dire need, then the situation might be a little different. In that case, it, it depends. Because it, be, it comes into the ruling of udhr as well. Udhr is basically what the person cannot do without. And then there's different rulings for that. Okay? Yeah. 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 Yes. I think that's coming up right now. Let's see when it comes. We'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. So, it, for example, if you have air going through only, that's different. So, if somebody has a CPAP machine, you know the CPAP, that's still allowed. It doesn't break it. So let's figure this out. We'll go with, just just uh, be patient with me. Let's see what, what we find here. So we're continuing on makru. Everybody understands makru actions. Basically, you, you lose the reward. And these are things that are detestable. They're hated. They're not good. Do not do these things. What is that? To complain of hunger and thirst. Okay, everybody's going through fasting. Complaining is not making your fast easy. It just, it's the mindset. We should be patient. Of course, it's a month of patience. To take water too much up to the nostrils when cleaning the nose. Look, you're making wudu. When you're fasting, just be careful not to go too much. Don't, don't do it too much. Be careful. Gargling more than necessary. You don't have to do three times and then gargle. And, and n next thing you know, water goes down your throat. Guess what? If water goes down your throat while you're doing that, your fast is broken. You have to make it up. So you have to be careful. You can't say, but I'm making wudu. You have to be careful. You're fasting. Okay? To quarrel, argue, use filthy, indecent words. Okay? All of these things are makru while we're fasting. It takes out all the reward. I mentioned in the khutbah, the second khutbah, that man lam yada' qawla zur. Whoever doesn't leave false speech, all of these things, falaysa lillahi haja. Allah has no need of this person to leave his food or his drink. Allah doesn't need us to stay hungry like that. Allah SWT wants us to do this exercise basically to gain taqwa, to become better and to control ourselves. To backbite, to tell a lie to, and swear are sinful acts even when one is not fasting so they become worse when a person is fasting. Alright, now we go to invalidators. What does that mean? The things that break the fast. These things will break your fast. Two criteria. Number one, it is has a possibility of reaching the stomach or the brain. And number two, it enters the body via mouth, nose, or anus. Okay, so these channels, if it goes through them, then it is possible that a person has broken his fast. Okay, now we're going to see this question here. Give me a second here. There is a difference of opinion. Okay, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Using an asthma pump, inhaling its gas will invalidate one's fast, okay? But again, you just have to make it up. Look, there's two things. One is you break your fast and you just have to make up for that one day. One is you break your fast and you have to give a kafara, which means you have to fast 60 days consecutively. Those are two different things, okay? Fasting and making up that one day is easy. But doing kafara is very difficult. That's 60 days continuous. That is a serious issue. So this is, of course, if you have to use the inhaler, you're using it on purpose, but you need it. So because of the medical need, then you just have to do a qada, okay? You stay, uh, let's see here one second. Uh, 
In order for one's fast to become invalid, one has to inhale the smoke or gas intentionally and deliberately. So if a person just smells smoke or dust goes in the mouth unintentionally, the, the fast is still valid, of course. Okay? All right. Okay, now your answer, excuse me, for your question. Those who need to use an asthma pump many times a day and find it difficult to fast have the dispensation of not fasting and paying the fidya instead. So for the people who need it all the time throughout the day, because then it would be too difficult to keep making up all those days, so they have the rukhsati or dispensa dispensation of not fasting and rather paying a fidya, which is a certain amount that you give for those people who are either sick or who have these kind of issues that they cannot fast. Okay, Islam is a religion of mercy and does not order its followers to do something that is beyond their capability. Understand this point here. Allah does not want from us more than we're able to do. So never think that Allah doesn't know what situation we're in. Okay, so this is, a, this is like a chronic asthmatics that needs this and it doesn't, the person otherwise would suffer if they were to fast. So they, those people are exempt in that state for that reason. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, if a person, if that person becomes capable again and becomes healthy and now their asthma is much better, then it would be better for that person to make up those days of fasting when they become healthier. That would be the right thing for that person to do as a means of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the good health that they have. So, everybody understands this here? You see the slide, right? It's pretty clear. These are the two ways that the fast can break. Now, two ways that you break your fast. One is only a fast makeup is necessary and the other is kafara also has to be made. Oral invalidate, invalidators here, um, anything that which passes, nasal oral passage and then goes down the throat, breaks the fast. So basically, if you're using eardrops, it's okay. If you're using eye drops, it's okay. Uh, any of these things are okay unless they are used in such a way or there's so much that it actually, I don't know, we have a doctor here. Does it actually, if you go through the ears, can it go through inside, through the stomach or the brain? No. Unlikely, right? Alhamdulillah. And how about oil on the head? No, right? There's no way. <laughs> okay, just making sure. What's that? <laughs> okay, guys. Just asking a question here. It's good to ask. Now, what about those invalidators that necessitate a qada only? This is for the people who only have to make up for that one day. What is it? If a person eats or drinks accidentally whilst conscious of fasting, his, his fast will break and will have to do qada only. Okay. Now, this is a little confusing, but I'll tell you what it really means, okay? You eat accidentally, and then you remember, oh, I was fasting, and you're like, oh, I already ate, and then you just start eating. You continue to eat and drink, you already, obviously, you've, your fast is broken. If somebody accidentally eats or drink while they're fasting, and when they remember, they stop, their fast is still valid. Obviously, this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah gave them food to drink and eat. So this is a hadith in Bukhari, it's coming up. So if you accidentally eat or drink, do not continue to eat or drink. Continue to fast, okay? A lot of people make this mistake. It's okay if you had a whole, whole like, you know, glass of water. Keep fasting. I had a classmate who had a whole lunch and then he remembered. SubhanAllah. Okay, Allah knows our intention and Allah knows best. And don't tell somebody while they're in the middle of drinking, scare them like you're fast. Let them finish and then tell them, hey brother, aren't you fasting? Oh, yes I was. Don't stop them in the middle or like take, you know, remove it from their, from their hands. Like just relax a little bit when that comes to that. All right, eating or drinking because one thought Maghrib entered but it didn't. Okay, this is why I tell people do not have the adhan on your phone. You know, the adhan ringtone, especially during iftar, you're going to ruin so many people's fasts. Some people's phone go off, their, their phones go off a minute before. 
and now they, they think it's the adhan, it was, the, it was on the phone, and then they start eating. So you have caused people to break their fast. So don't put those ringtones, especially during at iftar, and especially if you're with the community. Okay? Be careful. It should be maghrib. Maghrib time should enter. Usually some people wait 30 seconds to a minute. It's okay. You waited the whole day. One minute is not going to hurt at, as long as you are 100% that it's maghrib. Eating or drinking because one doubted that fajr entered, but it, but it did. So basically that's why we have imsak. If you finish 10, 15 minutes before, there is no doubt that you have uh, you know, started your fast at the correct time. Eating or drinking. Okay, this is done again. Now, what else can break the fast? The mouth, and, the mouth and the throat. Swallowing a pebble or any other items people typically would not eat. But you have it in your mouth and you swallowed it. Uh, it's still something that you did. Again, this is not by accident, but rather you're actually purposely. This is why it's not good to do this in the first place. Swallowing water by accident when gargling for wudu or ghusl. Okay. This, with the exception of water that remains in the mouth. You wash your mouth. Obviously, there's some water left. That's fine. But that's why be careful before you gargle and you wash your nose when you're making wudu in, during fasting. Be careful. Next, swallowing blood that exits from the gums and is more than the saliva. So you spit and you see that your saliva is more red than it is whitish. So... Basically, you're bleeding, um, and if blood exits from the mouth and you're bleeding a lot, then it does. Uh, and some people say that it depends on the, you know, how much it is. Some people say it's a mouthful, but if you are bleeding from your mouth, then, you know, you just have to make up that day. You can make up that day. Now, even if you have to make up a fast, it, you should still try to keep yourself from eating and drinking. You understand? If you're in a situation where the, any of these things happen, you can still continue to fast and make that up. And inshallah, you get more reward for that. Swallowing toothpaste or mouthwash. That's why it's better. You don't do it while you're fasting. Do it right before. Deliberately swallowing vomit that reaches a mouthful. Okay, that's, that's something that be careful about. Vomiting thereafter thinking that the fast is broken and then deliberately vomiting. So be careful about the vomit part and all of this. Okay. Now if a person is sick, obviously they're vomiting and they can't control it. Uh, they can make up for that fast. They should have something to drink. They should take care. Uh, again, if a person becomes sick to that point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want difficulty for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants ease for us. Now, another thing, the nose. Water used to clean the nose for wudu. This came a few times. Inhaling medicine into the nostrils, okay? This is where this comes. Inhaling medicine will break your fast, okay? Inhaling smoke by one's doing. So you're inhaling smoke on purpose, okay? And then, of course, smoking itself, okay? That breaks, obviously, that breaks the fast, okay? All right, now this one is... The big one, where not only do you have to make it up, but there's a kafara where you have to basically fast 60 days or there's another option for those who can't do that. If a person purposely breaks his fast in Ramadan without a valid shari reason through eating, drinking, or engaging in intercourse, then he will have to make up the broken fast after the month of Ramadan and also observe the kafara. Okay, what is that? To fast 60 days consecutively, if the 60 days of fast are not kept consecutively, a person will have to start all over again. It's a serious thing. Okay, if a woman is going through her cycle, then of course she will continue. It won't be regarded as discontinuity. She can continue from where she left off. Number two, if a person cannot do that, if they're not able to, they're not strong enough, then they can take this option number two. To feed 60 poor people two meals for a day or one person two meals for 60 days? Yes. As long as that person is being fed, as long as a poor person is being given that meal, just giving money, it, it's difficult. Is it going to go to the person? Is the poor person going to be able to have that meal? So you got to make sure this is happening. 
if there are poor people being fed, right? There are places like orphanages and other places that people feed every day. So you just got to make sure you sort it out and you should be good. All right. Um, okay, so these are for the people who cannot do kafara. And now when there is such an illness where there is no hope left for recovery according to doctors or old age to such an extent where fasting becomes very difficult, then one may fulfill the kafara through the second method here. And then there is also the fidya. And fidya is in the state where the person did not break or cause a kafara, but rather they just cannot fast, then they have to pay fidya. Okay? So first the person will do qada, make up those fasts, and then they will do the kafara and start those 60 days. All right. Yes, brother. All of these are from the kitab of the fiqh. All of these are from the books of fiqh. Yeah. Say that again. If somebody lost six, what? So, first and foremost, if you break six fasts, right, consecutively, you don't have to do six times. Yeah, I mean, this is different for everybody, okay? It's, it's different. It's not like that. We're talking about a person who's a Muslim, who is uh, able to, and who has all the ability and still yet does it. So, this is their way to make it up. Okay, and if you look at it, this is not really a punishment. Rather, this is really good for that person. The more they fast, the better it is for them. But of course, new Muslim, that's a different situation. Somebody whose iman is very weak. Someone who's, you know, Allah is the most forgiving. It's not like that. It's not like that. Who's going to do this anyways? That's from the Quran. That's from the Quran. In fact, it's in the 28th juz. Uh, uh, 60, excuse me. Yeah, that number is uh, in the Quran 28th juz and the first page of the 7th juz. It's there. All of the verses are there. Yeah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gave us these rules and Allah knows us better than anyone else. He's the one who made us. Okay, so there's a lot of wisdom behind all of this. We just have to Listen and obey, inshallah. But good question. Good question. Okay, non-invalidators. What These things, they don't break the fast. First is, if somebody forgets, the Prophet said, whoever forgets he is fasting and eats or drinks, let him complete his fast. For it is Allah Jalla Jalalu who has fed him and given him to drink. So you see the mercy there. His forgetfulness is very much forgiven by Allah. Swallowing one's own saliva and the wetness that remains, that's fine. Sniffing up mucus, even if it goes up to the throat. Although you sh this is not a good habit, but if you do it, you're okay. Your fast is still there. Inhaling smoke or dust unintentionally. Starting the fast in the state of major ritual impurity, it's okay. Injection, blood transfusion, kidney dialysis, glucose, saline drip. All of this is okay. It does not break your fast, okay? People ask this question throughout the whole Ramadan. It's okay. Okay, get as many as injections as you like. Although I shouldn't say it like that, but astaghfirullah. What was that? Halal ones, yes. The halal ones, astaghfirullah. All right. Actions that don't, okay, continue. Blood test, cupping. We're talking about wet cupping. Any form of blood extraction. Although I would be careful about this, that if you're able to schedule, schedule it for the evening, schedule it at a time where you're not fasting because you don't want to get so weak, right? If you feel too weak, that's going to make you want to break your fast and it'll become difficult for you, so schedule it in the right way. Tooth extraction, subject to not swallowing the blood or the medicine. If you are at the dentist, just be very careful 
And if you're able to schedule the dentist after Ramadan, then do that. If you're not, then just be careful. Inhaling air through the CPAP, okay? CPAP machine is okay. Or inhaling oxygen as long as it's not combined with another substance, okay? So if there is something that's a substance, it's something that is feeding you or something that is giving you nutrition, again, all of those things is going to break your fast. If it's just air or just oxygen, it's okay. Yes. Yeah. That's fine. It's okay. Yeah. Yes, brother. Yes. So look, let's say you're spitting out blood. Basically, if it's too much, then your fast does break. But you can continue to fast as long as you're okay. You can wash out your mouth as long as you don't need water. I mean, if it's a serious issue, then be careful. Yes. 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 So look, here's what we're saying. If you need to go to the dentist and it's a need, like you're in pain, you should go to the dentist in Ramadan if it's absolutely necessary. If you're just getting a cleaning, you can do that after on Eid. Okay, or after Eid. You don't need to get your cleaning done in Ramadan. Right, right. Anybody else? But now if... Yeah. Yeah, it's better not to. Right, right. So be careful. Be careful. Jazakallah khair. Be careful. Be careful. All right. Inhaling, that's done. Miswak, toothbrush, toothpaste should be avoided for the risk of being swallowed. Swimming and submerging your body in water without swallowing the water. Okay? So if you're swimming, just don't swallow. But then this is tough too. Avoid swimming if you can. Right? Just don't swallow the water. Tasting food provided not swallowed. This is for the, usually for the sisters whose husbands are very particular and, you know, I don't, I don't think this usually happens as much anymore. This is not for the brothers to go and taste, okay? If you think you can go and start tasting and just spit out, don't do this. This is not for you, okay? Nicotine patches, it's okay, all right? If anybody has lost glasses, they can grab these. All right, so what's next? Rules pertaining to vomiting. You can look this up. So vomiting only breaks your fast if you allow it to swallow, come down the throat, okay? If it's coming out and it accidentally goes down, your fast is still okay, it's valid, okay? Because you're not intentionally trying to swallow. If one vomits a mouthful intentionally means you're making yourself throw, a mouthful is that much which you cannot keep in your mouth, it just comes out. That breaks the fast, but obviously you just have to make up that date, okay? And even if you deliberately try to vomit, but it's only a little bit, it does not break your fast. Rules pertaining to, uh, that's done already, okay? Three things the Prophet ﷺ said, do not break the fast. Cupping, vomiting, and the wet dream. All right. And how does one decide when vomiting is a mouthful? Uh, the definition of mouthful vomiting is that which one cannot hold back in one's mouth without difficulty. All right. Uh, this is all done. Vomiting is done. Okay, okay. Uh, can I swallow bits of food left between the teeth? All right. If the particle is smaller than a chickpea, which is pretty big, chickpea, if it's smaller than that, 
it's okay, but you should try to wash your mouth out. If you have that big meat inside, then you really didn't wash yourself properly before going for fajr. If you got that much food left between your teeth, you're not watching your, you need uh, something called a, uh, what do you call that? Huh? The string. What do you call that? A floss. Man, you need a floss big time, okay? Now, if it's bigger than a chickpea, then obviously you broke your fast. So don't be chewing stuff and keeping stuff in your mouth. Uh, and that's about it there. Eardrops, eye drops. No, they do not break your fast. The fast will remain. Okay? Nasal spray. Consult a doctor. Okay? And ask whether the same medication can be applied by means of cotton swab to the inner lining of the nose. In this matter, the medication will not traverse beyond the nasal tissue, right? If it's just for that area, there is wisdom that can be used rather than using that nasal spray and breaking your fast. I think the brother that was here, that would have been good for the brother to hear. This is an area that the medication can be applied without breaking your fast, okay? So remember those things. Tooth extracts, okay. Uh, provided water, blood, or any of the liquids do not go down the throat, it's okay. But it's advised to schedule appointments outside of the fasting hours. Deodorants, perfumes, okay. But look, when you're spraying, be careful while you're spraying because it can go in your mouth. If that goes in your mouth, it does break your fast if it goes down the throat. So be careful, okay. Inshallah, there is going to be a gift shop opening which will have beautiful cologne and perfume. Just spray it on your body and not near your mouth, okay? I just thought I'd bring that in between. All right. Uh, smoking cigarettes, shisha, and other similar items will break one's fast. You shouldn't be doing that anyways. If you're doing it in Ramadan, that means it's a big problem. May Allah Ta'ala make it easy for us to let go of those habits. Okay, we already talked about the asthma pump here. We talked about this already. If a person is incapable of performing qada later, then he should pay fidya. Yes, brother. That's what we're talking about. Pump, inhaler. Is there a difference between asthma pump and an inhaler? Same thing, right? Yeah, so basically, if you have no choice and you need it, use it make up that day but if you need it all the time throughout the fasting then you have to pay a fidya for that okay all right injection does it break your fast no yes but later on if you become healthy you have to make up those days if you become healthy from that and you don't need to use it throughout the day then you should fast and make up those days okay how about the days for the sisters that are on the cycle Okay, they have to make up the fast, but they don't have to make up the prayers. So if you miss fast in Ramadan, make them up. Uh, a lot of people, they, a lot of sisters, usually in November, December, when the days are short, they make it up. That's, that's the best thing to do. Uh, let's see here. And they eat in a manner that a fasting person, that no fasting person sees. All right. What this is basically saying is people who are not able to fast for some reason or the other, they shouldn't be eating like where everybody can see them. Like don't be eating in front of everybody having a big meal or going to a restaurant or whatever. Like try to do it in a way where the people don't see you because, you know, it's the spirit of Ramadan. You don't want to be doing stuff like that. All right. What's next? It's the same things here. Like you try to act like the likeness of the person who's fasting. Same, same. Does a nursing woman need to fast? If a nursing uh, breastfeeding mother fears that she or her child's health will be endangered by her fasting, she will be excused from fasting that day and will have to do qada after Ramadan. For the same reasons, pregnant women will be excused for fasting, okay? All right. Does one have to perform the qada fast immediately after Ramadan? No. Okay, it's not necessary. However, it's recommended to complete the misfast of Ramadan as soon as you can because if you delay it and they add up, it becomes very difficult if the fast keep adding up and adding up. Okay? And there's another question which is really nice. Can you combine those qada fast with the six days of shawal? A lot of people ask that and yes, it is permissible. 
we hope from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will reward us for both the six days and for the making up of those fasts. And I believe our 25 minutes are done. Uh, I have not fasted all my life. Do I need to keep both qada and kafara? No, only qada is necessary. You see, that answers the question of the brother in the back. If a person didn't fast all their life, do they have to make up all of that? No, just start from where you are. Inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Another question. I didn't think this is as big as I, I thought it was a short uh, man. When does it need to fast if you are traveling on an airplane or you're traveling far, but the reward is great. So there are ways that you can do this without having to, you know, do that. So a person will base his fast on the time zone of the area the plane is currently flying through. Use the flight magazine which has the time zones of different countries at the back of the magazine. Ask the stewardess of the timing of the salah. So basically you're traveling and now it's basically time for suhoor and you're on your plane. You can ask for the time, have a meal, have some food and make niyyah and fast. Because look, the reason the, traveling, the traveler is not, is allowed to not fast, basically they're exempt, is because traveling is a part of the punishment. It's adab. The Prophet says it's a type of adab, meaning traveling is very difficult. But now today, even today, the person is away from their home, away from their, their own bed, their own you know, environment. It's still a little difficulty, but at the same time, there's luxury involved as well. So let's say I'm flying to Dubai tomorrow. Even if you're not on first class, you're still pretty comfortable. You can still pretty much, you know, sleep it out and take care of it. And, and you can do it. But again, you have the permission to make up that day and relax too. You can take that way. But some people don't. I'm just telling you, you have two options. Okay? It's not you have to not fast. You, you may fast as well. Okay? So you have both. So that way you don't have to make it up because the Ramadan fast are like no other fast. This, the reward in the fast of Ramadan is like no other reward. Okay? But these are the people that are exempt, a, a traveler who has to make it up after Ramadan, an ill person, or a person, if they have long-term illness, then they make they give the fidya. Okay, these are ayat from the Quran. What is the fidya? The amount equivalent to sadaqatul fitr and is given in exchange of keeping the fast. So for every day missed, one fidya. My mother, may Allah SWT have mercy on her, she was bedridden for a couple of years. And she had dementia and she was not able to fast. So what do we do? I would, as her son, pay fidya on her behalf for each day of fast that she could not fast okay that's the way we do it what are the conditions for fidya for an ill person as long as the condition remains chronic such that a person cannot fast either in ramadan or even make it up later then they will give fidya okay but if the condition approves mashallah they get better then they should make up those fasts okay what are the duas that to recite allahumma laka sumtu wa ala rizqika aftartu this is when you do iftar ذهب الظمء وبطلت العروق وثبت الأجر إن شاء الله. This is another dua. Okay, these are beautiful duas that you can recite, and that is basically it. Okay, so we're here at the end of it. Alhamdulillah, we'll give a little break. In Allah. If does anybody have any questions regarding fasts? If anybody has any questions, this is a good time. A lot of people assume that they know, and they will end up. You know, ruining their ruining their fast. Yes. Regular humidifiers are just like the CPAP, which is basically air. It's okay, but I would avoid fragrance. I would avoid the fragrances. Okay, CPAP is okay, even though there's water there. Do you have the whole mouth, or do you have the nose only? Let make it easy. Inshallah, maybe fasting will help, and then soon you'd be able to come off of that. Yeah. Yes, yes, brother. Okay. Subhanallah. 
May Allah Ta'ala grant her good health and recovery if it's in her qadr. May Allah grant her afiyah. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. It is very difficult situation. But if you're in that situation and you know that obviously she can't do any fasting, she's being, you know, uh, taken care of, taking medicine, then you give fidya on her behalf. You try to give a fidya. What's the minimum of fidya? According to some scholars, about seven to eight dollars is minimum. You can go up to ten and up to twelve dollars. If you're able to give at least seven to eight dollars a day, then do that inshallah. The masjid has boxes for fidya. The masjid has the boxes for sadaqatul fitr. Alhamdulillah, they made it easy for us. In that sense, you can just give them and you won't, you'll be absolved of the, of the obligation, inshallah. Sisters, any questions? We good? Everybody's good to go? Yes, brother. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about it. But it's fine. If you fast and you threw up, if it's, you know, not intentional, then you're okay. But if it's intentional that you threw up a lot, actually, let's go back to that. They had so much about vomit here, man. This is something I always forget. When it comes to that, I forget a lot here. Let's see. Allahu Akbar al kabira I usually do this, this whole program is for me to remember this stuff because if you don't go through this, a lot of times you forget. You forget the nose, the ears, can you do eye drops, can you do all of that? Yes, so it's the vomiting that you forget. Either, even if, however you vomit, you could still continue to keep the fast. That's one thing I will tell you. The question is, does it break your fast? Here it is. One return and swallow the vomit. Vomiting only breaks one's fast if one returns and swallows the vomit. So if, if it goes accidentally down the throat, it's okay. But if you're purposely swallowing it, that's a problem. If one vomits a mouthful intentionally, then the fast will break. If a fast is broken by vomiting, then you have to make up one day, basically. That's it. Deliberately, deliberately vomiting less than a mouthful does not break your fast. Okay? So it depends on how much. That's basically what it is. All right, guys, we're good to go. We have about half an hour left for Isha. And inshallah, after Isha, we have a very special seminar on zakat, which will get pretty interesting. I believe it's an hour and a half presentation, and then there'll be half an hour for Q&A. You can ask every question you want. Sheikh Uthman, mashallah, is an expert on the topic, so he will be able to answer all your questions. Everybody else is clear on the fasting, guys? We're good? Yes, bro. If you're spraying deodorant and it's a spray and it spreads and it goes in your mouth and it goes in your throat, the fast breaks. So be careful when you're using sprays, whether it's deodorant, whether it's cologne, perfume, be careful. Okay, be careful. Again, we talked about the brushing your teeth, mouthwash, all of that should be done before you start your fast. During fasting, it's all makru. You should not do it. You should not do it. All right. Um, what else was there? Yeah, so just be careful about that. It's not really good for either. If you're spraying per, uh, perfume, you want to do it in a way which is away from you anyways. Okay. All right, guys. Everybody's good here. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah, we will uh, take a break now. We were just going to do fit of fasting. Inshallah, in Ramadan, we'll talk about the benefits of fasting, the benefits as far as the health benefits, the benefits for the brain, the benefits for the dietary uh, benefits, physical, psychological benefits, how many benefits, the spiritual benefits. We're going to talk about all that, inshallah, throughout Ramadan. Uh, right now, we are going to conclude. Yes, sister. Yeah. Yes. 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 No, I'm not saying... 